God bless you. God bless you. This is Pastor Stephen J. of FaithWorks Church, located in Apopka, Florida. And yes, we are driving with the Word. And the Word of today is chasing after illusions. What do you mean chasing after illusions? Have you ever been driving on a highway and if you look up straight up ahead, you see what appears to be water on the road. It's a mirage. And here's the thing about the mirage. It's not really real, but it's reflecting reality. Because a couple weeks ago, I'm driving down the road and I'm looking up at the mirage. And I said to my son, is the road wet up ahead? He was like, yeah, look at the water. And you could see there was cars up ahead and it was given a reflection of the cars as if the road was wet. And immediately, God began to deal with my heart concerning his people and that we're chasing after illusions. Because I remember as a kid, and me and my brother used to always see that mirage on the road. We didn't even know what it was a mirage or whatever. But we would always tell my mom, like, hurry up, hurry up, let's catch it, let's catch it. It seems no matter how fast my mother would drive, we could not catch that illusion. And going straight to the word of God, Jesus meets a woman at the well. The Bible, actually, the Bible says he had to go through Samaria. So he meets this woman at the well and they get into a conversation and Jesus says, give me a drink. And she said, you know, you being a Jew and me being a woman of Samaria, you guys don't have any dealing with us. And, and you're asking me for a drink? And Jesus said, if you only knew who it was that was asking you for a drink, you would have asked him for a drink and he would have given you living water. And the woman says, sir, give me some of this living water so I don't have to come to this place anymore. You're probably familiar with this story. Jesus goes on to say, has a conversation with her, and then he goes and says, call your husband. And she says, I don't have a husband. He says, you're right. You don't have a husband. In fact, you've had five husbands, and the one that you're with now, he's not your husband. So this woman was in search of something. Maybe she was in search of love and she couldn't find it. Maybe she was in search of peace. But one thing that stuck out, she says, give me this water so I don't have to come to this place anymore. Well, when you think about that and you read the story, the Bible says it was about noon when Jesus stopped at the well. And this woman came looking to draw water from the well. Well, during that time, and even still today, nobody would actually come out at 12 noon to get water. The women of that time that did have to fetch water, they came early in the morning and in the evening because the sun was at its coolest. It wasn't as hot. At her coming at 12 o'clock, the sun was in the middle of the sky and she ran the risk of passing out because of uh, the heat and carrying the water at that time. So what was drawing her or what was she trying to avoid that she had to risk her life to come out in the sun at 12 o'clock to get some water? What was she running from? Who was she running from? She says, I don't want to come to this place anymore. And once Jesus says, go call your husband, and she says, I don't have one, and he says, you're right, you have five, and the, the sixth one that you are with now, he's not in. So you've been chasing after this, chasing after that. Maybe you're chasing after wealth. Maybe you're chasing after peace. Maybe you're chasing after fortune and fame. You're chasing after all these things. And here's the problem. When you put things before God, Jesus said plainly, and I believe John chapter 3 says, without me, he says, my father's a true vine. And I'm the husband or the gardener. He says, without me, you can do nothing. So when we are chasing after things and we find ourselves or we find these things that we're chasing after and we're always chasing after it, it's not being successful. We have to take stock and look back. Am I chasing after the right thing? If what I'm chasing after is a, an illusion, 
something that just gives me gives me the appearance of something that's real but yet it's not real at all gotta adjust the mirror on the phone but yet it's not real and this woman had been chasing something and she was trying to avoid something and some people that she didn't want to come but when she met Jesus think about this this woman was running and chasing after something and it's kind of like a cartoon from back in the day the person in the cartoon is running and running and running and no matter how much they run you see the background whoop, whoop, that same background repeating if you found yourself in that situation where things are repeating you're moving forward but going nowhere this woman was running after or chasing after something she was moving but going nowhere just simply passing by the same thing but then she ran, ran into Jesus Christ and when she ran into Jesus Christ she said our father Jacob gave us as well and when the Messiah comes he's gonna tell us all of these things and he's gonna explain everything to us Jesus said I am he I'm the one that you're talking about that's me and another key part of that scripture it says that she left her water pot there and went back into town and she told all the men I don't know why she went didn't go to the women but she went to the men and said come see a man that told me everything I ever did is this not the Messiah she left her water pot because she had an encounter at the well when she ran into Jesus. And Jesus was able to give her something that she's been searching for for the for a long time. Him. He gave her love. He gave her peace. Where she had no peace. He gave her, I got something for you that he, he matter of fact, he told her, he says. You drink this water, you're going to thirst again. But he says, I got something that you will never thirst again. And the word of God says that he who hungers and thirsts after righteousness sake shall be filled. This woman had been searching for a long time for this peace and love, joy, and she couldn't find it. She was unsatisfied. But when she ran into Jesus, he gave her exactly what she needed. And she left her water pot. She's no longer chasing illusions anymore because she ran into what's real. Stop chasing stuff that's not real. Jesus is the truth. Stop chasing stuff that's, that's false. Jesus is the life. He's the way. This woman realized that Jesus was the way she brought the whole town. And then after the town people came, the men, they said, hey, we don't believe you because of what you said. But we believe him because we heard him for ourselves. And they begged Jesus to stay two more days with him. So if that's you today, I encourage you to find Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Romans 8, no, Romans uh, 10, 9 says, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. That God has raised Jesus from the dead. Thou shall be saved. It is salvation like faith. It's just that simple. You would simply acknowledge that you, I am a sinner. You are a sinner. That we are sinners. That's what we acknowledge. That we are sinners. And when we ask God to come into our life. And we repent from our sins. Guess what? Well, that means we are turning away from doing wrong things. And we're accepting Jesus Christ into our life. And he's going to be our guide. He's going to be our Lord. He's going to be our Savior. And it's that symptom. And we stay away from those things. And I guess what? When you meet Jesus Christ halfway, I guarantee you, you're going to leave your water pot. I guarantee you, the thing that you've been chasing that hasn't been real, you're going to leave that as well. So the encounter at the water pot, she left it there with Jesus. Oh, that's so good. She left her water pot with Jesus. 
a lot of times in our lives, we try to take hold of stuff and we try to handle stuff. No, do like that woman did. We don't even know her name, but she left her water pot with Jesus. I don't need this anymore. I don't need to carry this anymore. I'm leaving it with you. Cast all of your cares upon him because he cares. So beloved, this is Pastor Stephen J. located in Apopka, Florida, and now located at Apopka Elementary School. I don't know the address, but it's on Old Dixie Highway, and it's at the corner of Old Dixie Highway and Vic Road. So I'm very excited. Uh, I just got the email probably an hour ago stating that we got approved to be in Apopka Elementary. Uh, so everything is all signed, sealed, and delivered. Uh, for right now, the contract is for August 23rd to June of uh, next year. So it's no longer I have to worry about anything. So I'm very excited. Um, if you're in the Apopka, Florida area, meet us at Apopka Elementary. They just rebuilt the school. Uh, just got finished a couple weeks ago. And I'm very excited because I submitted the application, I believe, last week. And it already got approved. And I kept getting the email, well, it passed this process, it's passed this process, it's passed this process, and this process. And before, when we were at Rock Springs, I love Rock Springs, because that's where we started out at, it just took a little bit forever, but God's favor it, it, it was here, and I, I'm just excited. So if you're in the Popka, Florida area, come meet us at 1015 at the Popka Elementary School at the corner of Vic Road, and Old Dixie Highway. I look forward to meeting you and seeing you because we're gonna have a great time in the Lord. Got my laptop back, so I'm excited. I'm gonna go there tomorrow to take a look and see how everything is gonna be set up in the cafeteria. So I look forward to meeting you. This is Pastor Stephen J of Faith Works Church located at Apopka, Florida. Now at Apopka Elementary School. This is Driving With The Word and we are done. God bless you. I will see you on Sunday. Peace out.